All right, well, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now, back in the studio, gonna paint a massive coastal scene, pretty excited. Got a nice little study here, I'll just grab it. Here we go. This is quite a successful little piece, so I reckon what I'm gonna do is work with this one and build a larger version. Now, I'll be playing a bit of video footage as well to entertain you through the, uh, through the scene and give you a vibe of what's going on. But basically, there's the composition, it's a little longer on this particular canvas and this one, but that'll work out okay. And uh, it's been, it's got quite a lot of good aspects about this picture, so I reckon it'll go well on a large scale. All right, so what we'll do is, we'll go for the biggest differences between having a blank canvas and this, but before we get started, I'll just show you the colors I'm using. Viridian green, magenta, phalo blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, a nice red, yellow ochre, Buckets of titanium white and cat orange. Okay, now with that colour palette, we should be ready to go. All right, let's go for a bit of a blocking. We'll get some beautiful blue here and a little bit of white just to line it a bit. Now this is just a bit of a pencil drawing basically to get you get us started on the shapes and forms. A bit of phthalo blue and white. All right, what are we going to do? Okay, I reckon here. I just feel that where I want the horizon about there today with the hill. The major cliff face. That can be that there. Alright. Now, this one could come up here. Got a couple of things going on at the moment. Oh, hang on. That'll go there. We'll just keep on going. We'll just. That'll be that. That. Just feeling these lines where I want them. That'll be out there, I reckon. A bit more white. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to want another headland about here. Maybe about there, it's not too bad. And that'll come in just a little bit lower than this one. Alright, once we've got that headland. We'll start going out to here and drift off into the never never. Still gives us just enough, just enough sky to work with. A bit more white with that. And drop down into there. What do I want that one to be? About there. And then we'll drop thinner. A bit more white just lightening the valley as I go back a bit. Uh, that's about that there. Alright, so we've got some shapes going on. I might just stand back now and have a look and see if it's the right blend and balance. Alright, it's about right. I reckon there'll be a little bit of a just here, we'll put one in just there. So major, major bit there. Maybe a twang higher there, just there. Very important to get these initial shapes in how you want them because that's going to set the stage for the rest of the picture. So we get these right and then we just start blocking in and it should go well then. I feel like the balance is pretty good and uh, whatever else. All right, what are we going to block in? The darkest darks. Get some. Elizabeth crimson, a nice red, a bit of Viridian green. Maybe a twang of burnt sienna and a bit of this. We just want some real dark. That's beautiful. And dark. Okay, now let's have a look. Gonna go for some pure red there. Pure red. Let's block in these shadows. Lovely, lovely dark values on the edge here. Some pure red. I'm trying to get pure red so when I scrape back to it later on, you get this translucent effect as you can see through that alizarin crimson. And what it does is it brings out some beautiful values. A bit of green with that, red. A bit like a watercolour wash. If you scrape back to it, it really thins it out. You can see through the paint and then the white comes through the red paint and really glows and gives you a great sort of a depth and accent to it. All right. 
to stand back to see if I've got that value right, and then I'll start going off into the distance. All right, happy with that. Let's keep going. I might get a little bit of magenta with that. A little bit of a blues, a bit of a white. Just go, I might like get the right value here. A bit of burns the end. I still want a dark value, but I just want to recede it off that little bit. Let's see what we've got. Cool it off. So it's a little bit, a little bit lighter in value. So we've got the beautiful red there and magenta, so it's quite a bit lighter in value, just as it chills off a little bit further back into the distance. Hang on, before we go any further. All right, keep on going. Just then it was a bit of fun. I went to push. I haven't got the easel attached. It's on the wheels and it's rolling around as soon as I started putting a little bit of pressure on. So I just tightened them up. All right, so now I've got a little bit more magentas and red, just lighten that value, send it back a bit. Lovely. Okay, that's going all right. Bring that down to here, is that where it's gonna go? Yep, that'll go into there, nice. And shoot up like so. I don't know about that. That looks about right. All right, now we'll go back one more way, just a little bit further side, a little bit more blue and white with the reds. Maybe there's a bit more white to lighten the value and a little bit more blue to send it a little bit cooler. Wobbling around a little bit there today. I'll get onto that in a minute. Put that in there. Bring that down. What have we got? That can be in there. And there. Just painting in that shadow in first, and then I'll put some. Once I've got the shadows in, then I'll put some lovely foliage and light tones across it. But at the moment, we're just trying to deal with this. That's good. I can go there, a bit more shadow out there. Right. Alright, I've got a clamp. It's making a bit of a rickety noise up here, so I can go on there. Maybe one more, there we go. Oh, and here. There we go, that's kept it all. Well, that's better anyway. Okay, let's get back into it. A bit more white, light and value, a little bit, a bit more blue. Got the alizarin crimson and the phthalo blue's creating a nice kind of nice effect. Alizarin crimson with that. Slightly lighter value than the one just before it. Just there, there. I'll be there, and there'll be a little bit one jutting out there. It's about how we want it. And coming out like that. All right, now we'll just keep on going. Go a bit lighter, a bit more white. Lighten the value with some white and blue. So it's getting cool as this goes back. This has got the most reds. The blues are getting less and less red and more blue as we go back. And more white. Let's have a look what we've got here. A bit more white and keep the red. White and red. Let's have a look. It's not too bad. Yep, it'll be jutting up in there somewhere. So, and we've got to work out where we want this peak to be. Let's have a look back and go there. Just start getting some on. Like that. Yeah, not too bad. Not along those lines. 
add a bit more white to this mix to lighten the value. Add a bit more white. If I gaze into the distance. Keep it on going, keep it on going. Oh, let's have a look at that, eh? All right, white's going pretty well. Let's get some sky in to establish what's happening now. So we'll go for some more white. Magentas and blues again. This is going to be a slightly lighter value. A bit more of the red thrown in. Let's have a look. You can either use the magenta or the alizarin crimson. It doesn't really matter which one that you mix with the blue. It'll give you that effect that you want. Let's see if we've got the right value here. That's about it. Just put that in for now. So that's uh, it's actually thalo blue this time with alizarin crimson and magentas. But I could use ultramarine blue and put a bit of red in it as well, either way. Just stick that in in the horizon line. Now looking at that sky, I want the sky that dark on on the horizon but I'm also feeling that maybe I've made the headland a little bit too light down this end here because I'm not really seeing a tonal variance much between the headland and the sky so I might make the headland just that little bit darker just got these in here Alright, let's get this on. That's nice. Beautiful. Yeah. I'll just have a look. I may just, like I was saying, darken that headland just a little bit. Let's have a look. Get a bit of this. Just put a bit in here. Water's edge. That can be there. Just put in a bit of the water around the distance. Now I'm going to darken the value a little bit. Just a bit more red. A bit more blue. A bit more red. Just see if I can get this value the right. On the right, black to white scale. That's a little bit darker. Could be right. A bit more red, a bit more blue, a bit more red. Build that up, drop that down. Yeah, feel how it goes, that's gonna go up like that. It's gonna come down like so and then jump to a bit of a headland like that and then jump to this one. All right, well that's about right now. You can see we're going dark and but gradually going cooler and lighter in tonal recessions. Now what I will do now is just get some of this again, some alizarin, crimson and burnt sienna. Put it in green maybe, make it dark. Some more of those darks again. Establish just along here. Some of the darkest darks, that can be a little bit dark there too. Just a few rocks here and there kicking around, nothing too much. That's really set her off. Just go a little bit darker in there. 
very important, like I was saying, to get these parts right at the start. And then when you start putting all the light on, we've got the shadows in, start putting the light on, it'll really just start to pop all of a sudden. All right. Okay. Just keep working with these here. I get some beautiful alizarin crimson. Phalo blue, like I said, you can use any of the blues, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Seems to work out alright. Put some white in that. Just going to paint some warm values. Just want to warm that up with a little bit more of a red dominant. What do we got? Let's use a bit of magenta then. It's not playing the game yet. Just putting some warm colours in here, that'll be the weed on the bottom. there. Here's more blues, more whites. Oops. Red, blue and white. There we go. Mix that up. Might just darken it right out. Get a fairly dark head. Here I'll go for a bit of magenta again. Get it pretty dark. Some of the weed. Yeah. Have a bit of burnt sienna with the weed as it gets closer. A bit of burnt sienna and colour the weed as well. There we go. And this is all the under stuff and then the beautiful lights also go on like I was saying. So working out pretty well, let's just get more of that ocean on the go, eh? Go for some white, blues, and some of the ultramarine blue. I'm playing with plenty of the phthalo. Let's just get a bit of ultramarine out as well for something different. Alright, and magenta. What do we got here? Yeah, that needs... I'll stick the viridian green, because what I'm trying to do is get more of a turquoise colour going as well. So I'll stick the viridian green in with those blues. It's a beautiful colour water out there. So you've got the weed colour, which is more of that purple colour, but then by making the sand, the bottom, the sandy bottom, that turquoisey colour, it's a lovely combination between the two. More of Wolverine Green. What I'm going to do now is introduce a little bit of yellow ochre. Okay, what the yellow ochre does with the Viridian Green as you get closer to the foreground. As you get closer to the foreground, it just goes more of that slightly olive green as you're looking more down instead of along. That seems to be about the correct thing. Lovely colours. Yellow ochre, green, green, white, blue. That. Let's fill in more of this foreground. Go to the edges nicely. Yeah, drag it across. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white, pretty and green. Keep on mixing burnt sienna, yellow ochre, pretty and green. Trying to get a real brownish colour in this area. A bit of seaweed as well, mixed up with maybe half mixed burnt sea inners. Lovely and neat on the edges here. There we go. Get that in there. Right, come to 
about down there, huh? Keep on playing around here. Applying paint. Here she goes. Looking good. Right up in the corners here. Now you could get a brush here, which I may do, once you've got all this blocked in with the palette knife, get a brush and flick along and it'll really soften it and really contrast against the cliffs, may do that. But at the moment I'm just doing the blocking and getting enough stuff in. Might stand back and have a look, see what's going on. That's all working well, let's just keep on going. Gotta get plenty of paint on before we can go play around too much. Let's just get enough bulk of paint on. Here's your ultra marine blue, pretty and green. Some more ultra marine blue. Here's a bit of red, pretty and magenta, whatever. Okay, let's have a look. This is going to go back a little further here. I'll put a bit of that on, but what I'm going to do in a minute, let's have a look. Yeah, I'm going to go darker than that. So we've got more ultra marine blue, more magenta. Bit of burnt sienna just to grade it a bit. I'm trying to not have too strong a chromatic saturation because it's going off into the distance. Let's have a look, what do we got? That's a darker value. That's good. Might just go a little bit more incredibly dark. We've got some ultramarine blue and magenta here. Magenta. What am I doing? Bit of burnt sienna. Throw a little bit more darks over in here. I think it's more red than that. And use magenta as the red. Pull that in. Nice and dark through there. That's good. Ultramarine. Magenta. Plenty of paint going on now. Going good. Let's just keep on going. Get some Viridian Green. Just gonna mix up some of those turquoises in the distance. Viridian Greens with the blues. Let's just see what we've got. There's a bit of yellow over in that. Okay. We don't want too much of the yellow ochre in the distance. So we've gone some ultramarine blue, viridian green is the most dominant colours there. With a bit more white to lighten that value because it's off in the distance, it just has to go slightly lighter. Not too bad, let's get that on. A bit lighter than that, a bit more white. Mix, 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 always tons of mixing to be done. lost its chromatic saturation. I just want a real turquoise here. So I'll throw a bit more of the Viridian Green in. It'll pump it up a few notches. There we go, look at that. It's taken up to a higher key. But still not full strength because we've got the distance going on. Maybe a little bit in here. Some of those Viridian Greens. Yeah, nice. Let's go way more for it in green. That's way stronger, a bit more white. Getting into the foreground now, it's way stronger chromatic saturation there. That's a lovely high key colour there. You can go in, beautiful piece of colour there. Those turquoise bays always look fantastic. You always feel like you want to jump in. As I get closer, a little bit more yellow ochre to this bay. It's got the Viridian Greens, but a little bit more yellow ochre. Yeah. And a little bit more yellow ochre again. <laughs> a 
way more yellow over there. Let's get this all blocked in, eh? That's it. Bring it to the edges. Alright, I'll stand back and have a look at that one. That's looking great. Now, obviously we need to get that sky changed, so let's get into that. I get tons of white. It's a sky with white value. Look at those greens thrown in. Phthalo is an ultramarine. Bit of ultramarine and phthalo. I'm trying to get a bit of a green. We've got the more of that kind of lavendery colour there. But now as I go up a layer above that, I just want twang of green in the sky. Yeah, that's about right. That's good, that looks like distance to me. Yeah, that's nice. Where are we going to throw that? We're going to put a cloud. There'll be a cloud about there. One about there, so in here will be a bit green. Good. Let's just go up a layer of ultramarine blue. A little bit more red as I get higher. So I've gone to the ultramarine blue again. I could use the thalo and use magenta like I was saying. Could work too. And it's a little bit darker because there's slightly less white involved. Hmm. It's going to add a little bit more white because that's a bit too big a jump. It's going to be such a big dramatic piece, I can just feel it, feel it now, it's going to be great. Establish that up there. So it's a bit stingy on the paint. A little bit stingy and didn't quite mix enough with these blues. So I'm going to have to go and mix them more, aren't I? I'll just get it a general idea first. There, alright. Maybe so slightly darker there. Can come down like that. That's alright. It's going well. Get that paint on. A little bit darker. That mix is a tad darker, so I've stuck it up in that corner there to draw your eye away from that area. Mm -hmm. It's not too far off. Earthy values here. Ooh, where's that? What's that painting up to? There we go. Get that into the corner, nice and neat, lovely. Bit of green. Start doing some of the foliage while I'm at it. Okay, so there's going to be foliage, of course. So that'll be. Where's that going to be? Got rocks. The foliage thrown on. Lovely green, nice and cool. the green stain in here. Brooding green, green in and yellow ochre, yellow ochre. As it goes into this next phase, that's a lot cooler values. That's going to all be in shadow. Everything's very cold at the moment but that's all setting the stage for when we put on all the sunlight colours. And once that starts happening, all the warm values against all these cool ones, painting will just really start to go then. 
I've got to get these on first, got to do a bit of work. There'll be sunlight across there, we can leave that. A bit more blue. Slightly lighter value. Yeah. Blue's in there, blue green. Yeah, it's going well. Twang of green in there. Let me just stand back and see if I got that right, and then can't wait, I'm going to start on those blooming light tones, flick them in and you watch the sunlight come. Quite fantastic stuff now, let's get into it, eh? Been going on about for ages, yellow open and burnt sienna and white. Talking about this light source, these beautiful warm values, nothing's really happened yet. Now I'll use a bit of these excess blues lying around to help create these green foliage colours. I'm using burnt, burnt sienna yellow oak and some of the sky blues. Let's see if we've got it right, just lightly touch. That's pretty good. Just lightly touching and letting it kind of dance along the top. That can be there, there. Letting the blue shine through to give the feeling of the foliage, the different bushes and whatever else. Looks fine. That's kind of good. All right, that's coming along well. Let's mix up some light, rocky colours, really get the sunlight and shadow going. Go for white, cat orange, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, half mix it. Throw that on. White, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, half mix. Mix that in. Stuff sticking out here. Bit of a headlamp jutting there. Some more burnt sienna and white. And the cat orange to make it pop up even more. Gonna need some yellow oak and burnt sienna. Yellow oak. Burnt Yeah. More yellow oak on burnt sienna by itself. There's a bit of a weed and stuff like that on the edges. You've got sandy kind of values, but you've also got the weed. Just block that in, get it in. That's it. Plenty to do. Lighten her up, stick a bit on here. Light of value. Alright, white, cat orange, yellow ochre, white. Really warm value here. Stick it on there. Big sunlight patch there. Be jumping through here. Up into there. Bit more white to lighten it. Just touching and dancing. Alright, well, that's coming along nicely. We're just starting to dance around with you know, some of the light and shadow on here, what we might do is just, as we go back, it's going a little bit more magenta with the white, just to send it off a bit more. So we've got those yellow ochres, but there's a little bit more magenta and blues as it goes further back. That will be there, yeah, that's nice. That sort of thing. That'll work. 
Now I'm thinking what I might do is, before I go too much further, I might actually get the brush out and just soften things off, really pull some beautiful subtleness into it, and then I can start putting these high key bits of sunlight on. But before I put those sharp bits of sunlight on, let's get that softer. Brush, let's just have a look, we just pull through it. Really pump, pump that colour across there like that. Pull it through, it's softening nicely. Might just get a bit of paper towel out. And I'll change brushes. What I want to do is get the sky going. I'll just stand back and have a quick look how that's going. That's going well, yeah, nice. So I'm just going to grab this. Soften that edge off. Wipe it, wipe it clean. Pull it back. Pull through like that. With, have the confidence to use a bit of speed. So, the mucky brush there. Just gonna use a clean brush here, pull through, wipe it clean. Pull it through like that, that's nice. Soften that a bit. It's going well. Go back to one of these brushes, what do we got? One of these. Now, let's just get this water. Just gonna soften it. Paint's starting to fall off the edges. Pull through. And what I'll do is I'll put knife work back on top. But what I'm doing here is it's getting a lovely, subtle softening of all the water and I can go to the knee on the edges here, I can get the paint right up to the edges. There we go, soften that nicely. Pull that through. Let's give it a nice dramatic soft effect. Well, for a start, you can see it's really softened it. Now when I put the marks on, it'll, it'll stand out much sharper with the biggest contrast. It's always about contrast paintings and the sharp palette knife marks against the soft brush will really jump and pop. That's really softened it. That's looking great. Right, let's get into it. Get the whites and the magentas and the blues and whatever. With the ochres. Okay, what are we going to do here? I would like that maybe to be... Hmm, just got to work on this, work this out about there. You want a random, pleasing pattern, non-repetitive pattern going on through here. It's good. A little bit more magenta with that mix, and blue, and white, just going to send her off into the distance. So the blue and the magenta will take it back and weaken the chromatic saturation of those ochres. Bit more magenta. Now it's got too much ochre in it. Let's go over here and move it across because from underneath we're picking up some of the ochres are getting too strong. That's keyed it right off with a lot of blue. And magenta. You want this to be about the distance here. Yeah, that's gone back a lot. That's nice. Dance all the details around. That's gone right back. Yep. Come back into the foreground more, a bit of orange to twang it. As we get closer to the foreground. Over here. A bit more orange and white. Yellow ochre. Stronger chromatic saturation of all the ochres. That's it. Nice. Bit magenta. It's all very subtle, all these different blends as it goes further and further, because what you've got is it's very subtle, it keeps on going back and receding further and further. If you want that illusion of distance, but you've got to have very subtle mixes in the ochres as it recedes. Bit more cat orange 
as you know. Just to bring it out ever so slightly. Bring that up. Start smearing a few things with a knife, blend it. Sienna. Really rich in there. Well, she's all coming along absolutely beautifully. But the biggest difference now is obviously I've left those clouds white. So let's put the clouds in. I want them to be keyed right back. So I'll get some of these blues and magentas. Even though they're nice warm mercury colours again, they've got to recede off into the distance and not compete with the foreground values if you want that illusion of depth. So what I'm doing is I'm adding, I've got my ochres like either burnt siennas and yellow ochres and cat orange, whatever those warm values. But then I'm adding Plenty of white, obviously, but adding also blues and magentas, and that just knocks them back because of the opposite on the colour wheel, those big blues and whatever. The opposite of the ochres kills the chromatic saturation, sends them off into the distance. Let's just make sure I haven't got it too grey. Let's have a look what we've got. It needs to be whiter than that and slightly stronger. So I'll get a little bit of burnt sienna, but it's very much a grey down version. What do we got? Yeah, it's very greyed off. That's nice. Send it back. Send it back on forever. Into the distance. They go, it keeps on going back and back, further and further. Going forever. A lot of atmosphere there. Interfering and sending, sending it right back. Oops, bit of, bit of green bushing up in the sky too, we don't want that. Let me have a look, see how she's going. Well, that's all looking pretty good, but now, just put a little bit of surf in over, get a bit of white. Pure white there. A few other values. Just knock a little bit in here and there. Just gonna feel where I want it, where do I want it today? So I can be in there. I'll put it in and take away. Sometimes that's a good thing. You can put it in. Accidentally put too much and then go right now, drag it off. That kind of helps too. Just get a suggestion of it here. A suggestion out there, maybe. It's got a knife on all angles. But in there, that's nice. Let's get a slightly smaller knife. Knife on edge. Picking out some of the details. Knife on edge, really picking out the surf. Clean, sharp lines. Slightly keyed down in the distance, not quite as white. The atmosphere's starting to take over. All right, things are starting to happen. Let's just get some real accents here. A bit of white, I mean, cat oranges and white. Got some yellow ochre. Just want to feel what it's like if I add a little bit more spice through here. Where are we? 
Gonna need some more yellow oak, we're running out of yellow oak. Good stuff this. Yellow oak are in the canisters, cartridges. Let's pump a bit of that out. If I end up with too much, I just get a bit of a clear foil, I guess, clear foil wrap. If I've got too much left over with the canister, dump it in that clear foil wrap, glad wrap or whatever, and just do her up and she stays nice and wet for many, many weeks afterwards. All right, let's see what we're doing here. It's nice patterns. Okay. All right, what are we going to do? White, yellow ochre, high key colours. Bit more yellow ochre. Just lightly dancing a bit of light on. Yellow ochre, white. Little bit of light highlights now, just put the sun shining. Just splash them on. That's nice there. A little twin of them in here. All right, well, things are really getting there now. Pretty happy with what's going on. I've got great near to far. I've put some really strong, bright colors here, along with the dark tonal values. And the idea of that, of course, is to set the stage to be able to recede as you go back. And so all these colors back here, you saw me when I first started blocking in, these are all the warmer colors, more like reds and magentas and whatever. As it gets down to here, it gets more magentas and blues, and it gets much more into the blues there and weaker chromatic saturation. That sets it off to go further and further back into the distance. Then I'm using pure white highlights through this area here are what the eye's drawn. But the clouds and whatever here are keyed way down and that pushes them back. And the whole concept of this painting, not only is it about the beautiful coast, but it's also about the fact that you've got this near to far going on. And so I've also contrasted here with some really thick high key bits of paint where the sun's striking. Really want to bring it up into your face. And then this stuff here is painted thinner and pushed down flat. So the whole thing near to far. Pretty happy with what's going on. Nice composi composition. And you saw I blocked all the cooler values in and all the shadows in first. And everything was very, very subdued. And then all of a sudden, once I started banging those bright colours on against those cool colours, that's a massive contrast. And all of a sudden the light and shadow and the sun came out. And all the depth came out. So now... Yeah, pretty happy. And we've got some beautiful subtle bays here, turquoise. And as the turquoise goes further back, it gets a little bit more of a blue turquoise here and a bit more of a yellow ochre turquoise here to bring it up. Yellow foreground, blue as it recedes. Deep blue patches here for the weed and whatever else to contrast. And I've got more magenta in that. So you've got the, the turquoise, which is a green, the magenta, which is more of a red. So it's the warm against cool again inside the water, even though they're cool, all cool values. They're still warm and cool, cool values. All right, big bold application, nice bits of red and whatever else. On the whole, pretty happy with what's going on. A few high cat oranges highlights where the weed is on the rocks to really make it sting. Let's get that camera off, come buzzing right in so you guys can have a look and see what you think. All right, thank you.